for my Young Arts application in theater, I'll be doing violin. For my application in Young Arts, I will be dancing George Balanchine. Who wants to go first? Yeah! <laughs> I can stand on my own without you! What you want to do is change an audience. And we've often rewound the clock since the Puritans got a shot. It's Patty Lapone. Are you kidding me? What I mean, it's Patty Lapone. Patty Lapone, you know, it's like Broadway royalty. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is, I never left you. I just can't wait to like learn from someone who can do that so well. And love to wander. It's just like gypsy in mine. So She's really able to pull you in, getting the audience involved in her journey. I just feel like people who can do that are absolutely magical. And that's the kind of performer I want to be. The Velasco was so incredibly beautiful. It was like a theater slash church slash art museum. Oh my God. Literally, you can't look anywhere without something amazing catching your eye. It's such a beautiful, beautiful space. You walk in, and it's really awe-inspiring. Someone could be watching me from here one day, you know, in my dreams. Oh my <laughs> wow, this place is classy. No. I could sort of imagine people sitting there and watching, and I just thought, wow, this must be an incredible feeling. Did y'all hear my echo? Ooh! Uh... <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Mike oh Hi, I'm Patty. Hi, I'm Maggie. Maggie. I'm Reed. Reed. Yes. Hi, I'm Kira. Kira? Yes, ma'am. I'm Ryan. Ryan. Hi. Ryan. Kira. Maggie Reed. Well, a master okay. like Patti Lapone is going to be looking at what I do and critiquing me and working with me and really getting in there with me. And I am just beyond excited. Like, let's go. OK. Well, who wants to go first? Me. Then I'm going to tell you, Kira, I am an audience member. OK. And your task as a singer and an actor is to tell the story to the audience. When you sing, it's not about just, and now I'm going to sing a little ditty for you all. It's like your emotion, how you feel about what you've been saying in a scene or dancing or whatever, it has gotten so strong that you cannot possibly express yourself in any other way than just, no, like you just let it out. Pennies or nickels or dimes, we live in pennies. Times. I don't ask you to treat me nice. I'm not asking for pleasant conversation. I'm not asking for paradise. All I'm asking for is change. In the show, it's the role of Lisa. She's a homeless woman asking for change. It's the voice of a person who doesn't feel like they're being heard all the way, and doggone it, they're gonna shout until you hear them. I'm not asking for sympathy. All I'm asking for is change, change. <laughs> Tell me about the song. Are there riffs in it? Are there riffs in the music? Or did you add them? I think I added them. OK, number one, never, ever, ever rewrite a composer. It is not your place. If he didn't write it, don't sing it. And that's the first thing. 
You are here to serve the playwright, to serve the composer, to serve the lyricist, not to put your opinion on it. I say that to, not just to you, Kara, but to you guys. Your stamp will be your interpretation, but you can't alter what they've written. Better to hit a note that goes straight to their brain and their heart and their groin. Everything she said was in love, even with the critiques. Like, I was scared to death when she told me I shouldn't have riffed. I was like, oh God, I've offended Patty. But it was like, I've just kind of collected myself because I could tell in the moment that this wasn't a time where she was expecting me to grovel and be just like all these different things. It wasn't about that. It was about her helping me to see something that I didn't know before. You have great delivery, great presence, and a great voice, really. Thank you. But now I want you to connect. And I know how difficult it is in this situation. This is impossible. But if you can do it in this situation, you can do it in that situation. That's right. Yeah. I always look. I'm the first person that, um, you know, people think it's unprofessional. But I will look to look at my audience. Every time, every time. Now it's superstition for me. I have to see them. If I don't, I'll turn in a shitty show, uh, a bad show. Um, <laughs> but I like to see who I'm playing to. I want to know who that audience is that I have to command the minute I walk on the stage. What do you think of the conflicts in this song? Um, what do you have to get across to this person? What do I have to get across? That I'm different. I feel like I'm battling a stereotype, sort of. Like, with the whole drugs thing, I feel like I'm really having to battle to get you to change your mind about me. Like, I know you've gotten begged for a lot of change before, but I'm different. You want it for what? Food? Another chance. Another chance. Great. It's like, you know what? Let's take it from the beginning again. OK. And you, I wonder, do it slowly. Can I take the edge off? Yeah. I think so. And do it. Let me see what happens to you when you just do it slowly. I mean, you would have to ultimately do it in tempo, but why not play around? What you want to do is change an audience. What you want to do is capture an audience. And you have to find your way of doing that. Hate me, but don't kick my shins. I'm where your kindness begins. Most of my characters, actually, I could pick out places where I feel like they're not being heard and they're trying to rise above that. So not being heard and rising above, sort of triumphing over your circumstances or over whatever is going on, that is really inspiring, I think. Change the system that made us what we are. I don't ask you to tip your hat. I won't ask that you notice what I'm wearing. I need a Kleenex. <laughs> wow. But your voice really moves me. And when I was sitting here, just listening to you, you don't betray yourself, which is the best thing. You know what I mean? There's no ego. There's no false confidence. You are who you are. You're, you're blessed to be so self-possessed. As long as you respect this, as long as you thank God for the grace you've been given, the gift, you know, we're simply vessels. And that information that goes, to, passes through us, through song, through poem, through written text, is to be given away. Given, given, given. Yeah, to give the it audience. To, give to it the to audience. them. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, here we are at Joe's. All of the, the posters on the, that wall over there, 
If you'll notice, they're all flops. They're right. all flops. Oh, I love wow. it. It's like unbelievable to be like meeting you like at this stage in your life. But I was wondering, could you describe for us um, Patty Lapone at our age? Like, what were you oh, like? Oh, I was. Well, oh, you like, don't even want to know. No, <laughs> it, would, it would be censored. <laughs> 18? Oh my God, it would be censored. <laughs> 18. Well, I moved into New York City into a five-fly walk-up on 90th and 2nd Avenue. And all I wanted to do was audition for Broadway musicals and party. Well, I partied <laughs> and I auditioned for Broadway musicals. And then I auditioned for Juilliard, only because my mother and my brother wanted me to and I got in, much to my surprise, because I went with the attitude that I didn't care whether I was going to get in or not. And then I spent the next four years crying every night in my little apartment because the, the training was brutal and the best training I could have had. So at 19 years old, I started on my course. I also then, after that, dedicated four years to the acting company. So I trained with the same actors and in classical theater for eight years, which gave me armor, 15 years of technique in four. And it served me to this day. I only get stronger and stronger and stronger because of the basis that I had at the very beginning of my career. That's why I urge you to study. She's very disciplined in her work, and she takes it very seriously and expects other actors and students to take their work very seriously. I wake every day in the usual way at the stroke of 7.15. Then I stretch and I shower till half past the hour and shave my whiskers clean. <laughs> stop right now. When she said stop, I was excited. I was like, yes, Patty's, Patty's gonna coach me. You know, this is huge. You have certainly worked out every move of this song, haven't you? I guess it's just in my body, yeah. Uh... It's not organic. Okay. And you're looking over me. Are you aware of that? No, I guess I'm just, yeah. You can work out every moment of a song if when you come to the song every time it's an organic move okay and it's this is this is manipulative do you know what i mean yeah. you're posing okay i was like wow you really can i always do this gesture on this word why am i doing this it's got to be spontaneous it's got to be fresh trevor nunn said murder the precious darlings and the darlings you're murdering are your bits so now you're gonna put your hands behind your back and tell me a story I wake every day in the usual way at the stroke 7.15. Just talk it. Make your point. I wake every day in the usual way at the stroke of 7.15. That's the sentence. Right. And what do you, what's the point you're trying to make in that sentence? That I abide by a schedule. But in that sentence, what's your point? My where, where, where's the emphasis in that sentence? You wake every day in the usual way at the stroke of 7.15. Talk the song, make the point. So we already know I wake every day in the usual way at the stroke of 7.15. What happens after that? Then I stretch, I shower till half past the hour, shave my whiskers clean. Then what happens? At 7.41 I dress. And then what happens? Till it's 7.52 then I wait to make sure that I get to the deli on the corner by 7.58. Because? And then, yes, sir, on time, it's her. So the point of that whole thing is her. Yeah. You're getting to her. Yeah. Now, the way you just told me, your face was totally animated, and it wasn't the expressions you've practiced. Uh-huh. And you engaged me. Yeah. Let's try it again. And okay. Throw out everything that you practiced. Okay. And just tell me what you just told me. Okay. At 7.41, I dress, till it's 7.52, then I wait to make sure that I get to the deli on the corner by 7.58. Now, why did you change your expression on 7.58? Because the music dictated it? I, I don't know. So, no faces. 7.58. Great, great, keep going. And then, yes, sir. On time, it's hard. In 
she comes, the deli hums, the walls fluorescently shine, and all aglow, I stand just so, she hops into the line, and brusque, even rude, she orders food each day the same, and as she pays... Stop right there. Why was that negative, the day the same? You love this girl! Yes. You would like to be her bagel! Okay. And everything bagel! It's, again, a specificity. Do you know what I mean? It's not just a song. It's a story. You're so known for your voice as well. As being an actress, where, when did the vocal... I always had it. You always had it? And... But it was, it was, it was, Ju I'm, Julia doesn't have Broadway musical theater. Right. But, so I went as, I trained as a classical actor. And, uh, the, but I always knew I had a voice. Yeah. So, awesome. and I always knew, when I was a kid, I always knew I'd end up on the Broadway musical stage. I don't, what do you pull from to make each show sort of new for you? First of all, you have to love being a storyteller. Yeah. And if you love being a storyteller, then you want to tell that story. And if you want to tell that story, you have to remember that that particular audience hasn't heard the story before. That's why I look at the audience. I go, okay, I'm going to be telling a story to those people tonight. And this person isn't going to get it because I'm going to have to work harder for that person. And these people really want to be there. And oh my God, I got to reach the balcony tonight. So it's just about starting at the very, very beginning, simply starting at the very beginning and tell the story. All right. I'm really nervous. Like, what if I'm not good enough for Patti LuPone? And whew, it's a little nerve wracking. Makes you crazy. Here it's safe and sound. My mind is somewhere hazy. My feet are on the ground. To me, acting through a song is a lot easier than acting. I can hide behind the melody and kind of like, I can be more vulnerable without, I can appear more vulnerable without actually being more vulnerable, I guess. I miss my life. How old are you? I, in real life. In real life? I'm 18. Isn't this the mother? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I haven't seen it, but I knew it was the mother. And the mother's bipolar? Mm-hmm. Where is this in the show? Does she, do, do, does she move from here into... Some action, some kind she of... She stops taking the pills. Okay, so this is a big transitional song. This is something that changes the course of the play? Okay, I gotta see that. <laughs> the very last line is, I miss my life. I'll bet you she gets up and walks and lights go out, and it's a brand new scene, and now she's crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> or you see her taking the pills and flushing them down the toilet. That's actually exactly <laughs> and what happened. She, plates. she flushes them down the toilet. <laughs> and in this particular song, I would imagine the mountains are an orgasm. You know what I mean? I'm not exactly, I didn't really understand what she was saying when she was like, maybe I miss the mountains as an orgasm. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I don't really think that's it, but sure. <laughs> is it really mountains is what I'm saying? Or is it some facet of your life that was, you know, ecstatically high? It's, it's, I think it's outside your range at this point, your age range at this point. You don't have enough pain in your life. You don't have enough mm. ecstasy in your life. I'm curious to see, what's the next song you pick? Without You from My Fair Lady. Oh, cool. All right. There'll be spring every year without you. England still will be here without you. There'll be fruit on the tree and a shore by the sea. There'll be crumpets and tea without you. Not she seemed a little bit like a steamroller. She, you know, she's just like, oh, you know, I'm coming, whether you're ready or not. But she actually was interested and cared and just wanted to help us. I need you to get madder. Okay. You want to tear his hat off. 
Can you elicit that anger? Can you bring that anger up? Yes. I think my problem was like, <laughs> I, I'm really shy. You have to know yourself like really well, which is hard. Stan, I want you to stand still and okay. just be really, really mad at me. There'll be spring every year without you. England still will be here without you. There'll be fruit on the tree and a shore by the sea. There'll be crumpets and tea without you. Stand still. Go. Garden musical Like, she was just sitting there like, you know, like, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh man, Patty LuPone is telling me to yell at her. And I was like, okay, sounds good to me. You can go to Hartford, Harrisford, and Hampshire. They can still. It was really weird yelling at Patty LuPone. Like, I was in her face and, and I kind of backed up at one point. She was just like, oh no, come on. Like, I shall not feel alone without you. I can stand on my own without you. So go back in your shell. I can do bloody well without you. <laughs> How did you feel getting that out? Oh, I felt good. Huh? Does it, did it feel good? Yeah. See, that, you have to find the place, that you have to find where you, how far you can go. Do you know what I mean? You could do that in the privacy of your bathroom. But ultimately, that's your rehearsal period. Mm -hmm. Where you go, I, I always say to a director, I'm just going to take it out. I don't know where I'm going, but let me take it out, because then I, I'll be able to bring it back in again. If I don't take it out, uh, and that, by that mean that by that I mean really exploding it, you know, making a mistake. I I'll never know where to go. I'll never be able to. But that was great. I loved the fact that you were able to lift it out. Yeah, I don't want any ice cream, okay. or it can be on the side. Oh, oh get dessert! dessert. <laughs> Can I have a single malt scotch? I'm no, no. It was very unexpected <laughs> <laughs> and very funny. Now, Maggie, wherever that came from, I think you're a comedian, right? Right. I do tend to get the character roles. There's nothing wrong with that. Those are the ones I wanted to play. Ado Annie, Adelaide. The character roles sometimes pay off better than the leads. Like, is it possible, like, I'm, just, I'm going to a BFA in acting, like straight acting, but I want to pursue musical theater. Like, if I keep studying the voice, if I keep making sure that's strong, like, are people going to, like, think less of me because I'm just an actor? No. I was just an actor, and the first thing I learned after acting school was Evita. And you want to be able to act the book scenes and sing. Everything she said, I wanted to absorb every last word because everything coming out of her mouth was so well thought out and so, um, so wise. All right, Ryan, you're up. <laughs> Ryan, what are you going to sing? I, it was terrifying um, in all the best ways. Uh, she told us to look her right in the eye, and that was probably the scariest thing. Because, I mean, you can sing and look up and be in your own world, but the minute you're looking Patti Lapone, the Patti Lapone, in the eyes and sharing this artistic expression with her, it's a beautiful but scary thing. I never walk when I can run I don't believe I ever could People try to slow me down Saying, boy, you really should Kick back and chill, but I can't stand still I called the doctor, he said, son, I Stop. cannot... Wrong key. Okay. Wrong key. <laughs> Up. Let's Make do it. it harder. <laughs> no, really, I don't know how high it goes, but you know, you're, you're down in your, your lower register, and I don't believe you can't stand still. Okay. This has got to be an, it's got to be on the edge. Do okay. you know what I'm saying? What do you think, Chris? Yeah, let's try. I mean, it gets high, so let's try it. Does. Let's, but so what's the scream yeah, we'll it? We'll yeah. yeah, all right, what are let's we doing here? Half step? Ah! Uh, let's, let's try it here. And move if you want. I never walk when I can run. I don't believe I ever could. Higher. Half step higher. <laughs> what? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, is, it, uh, is that at the top of your range right now? Yeah. Can, let, hit that. What, what, what would the last note be in the, in the uh, half step higher? This. Ah, that's right. Ah. Wait, where, where is it? What, which one? I is always it? thought of, okay, change the key if the whole song isn't in your range. But Patty's saying, change the key if even part of the song isn't in your range and make the other stuff just work. 
And um, that was something I was definitely too afraid to do. I called the doctor, he said, son, I cannot offer you a pill. So I never found relief, and now I've got to move until I've had my fill. And I can't stand still, back where I come from. The piece wasn't easy anymore, which I think was a really good thing. And I ended up doing things like moving around that I never would have thought I would have done because I think I was just so out of my comfort zone that I didn't even have a comfort zone anymore. You look at me now. I'm trying hard to tone it down. I gotta watch my P's and Q's. Maybe look before I leap. But then I think, hey, what's the use? I ain't done it yet. And I can't forget how it feels when you dance till you drop. So don't even start to suggest that I stop. I never will. I can't. No, 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 no. 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 I can't stand still. <laughs> did, did it take a little bit of effort? Oh my God, that was so much fun. You know why that was so good? You know what you're singing about, and there was joy in your face, and that's what you gave to the audience. And you have a great voice, by the way. You have a really extraordinary voice. I mean, by the end, I was like panting and like listening to Patty's notes and sweat was coming down my face. But I was like, hey, you know what? That was so much better than I've ever done it before. And you went for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You had courage. It's the other thing. You have to have, you have to be brave. Okay, so that may be too high for you, but you have to not be afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. Failure is the only thing that teaches. Success does not. Success limits you because you try to repeat your success. And you have to be fearless on stage. You know, it's really about possessing your individualism, understanding who you are, accepting who you are. It's really, too, it's, it's acceptance, a lot of acceptance of who you are and what your limitations are and what your limitlessness is. Do you know what I mean? We all have limitations, but no, we don't really. I mean, we do and no, we don't. So you acknowledge what you have and you stretch in another direction. You all have gifts, and you, and you have gifts to be grateful for, and gifts to be given away. Mm -hmm. Honest to God, what's important for me is that the tradition of theater continues, that it doesn't get lost, and it's getting harder and harder the more they cut the arts. If you choose to go into this profession, you carry on the tradition of the actors before you, and you honor the craft. It is a noble profession. It's a very, very, very hard business. But if you love it, there's no other place you'd rather be. So I love this dressing room and I love this theater. Your dressing room becomes your home. This is a beautiful shower. That was my kitchen. Because I have to sleep between shows and there were people on the floor with pillows, etc. And they were watching the World Series. <laughs>